from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, Veeam, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Here in Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Cisco Live 2018 in Europe. I'm John Furrier, uh, co-host of theCUBE with my partner in crime this week, Stu Miniman, senior analyst at Wikibon, also co-host of many events across the, the world in terms of networking, storage, cloud, you name it, Stu is on the developers with me. Stu, thanks for seeing you. Stefan Renner, technical director, Global Alliances at Veeam Software is with us, with Darren Williams, Mr. Hyperflex, that's his Twitter handle, <laughs> go, go check him out. Hyperflex um, lead at Cisco. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you. I sort of love the Twitter handle. I, I live the brand. <laughs> you live, live the, the brand. brand. Yeah. I mean, that's got some. Yeah. That's got some longevity to it. It's evergreen. Um, yeah. So congratulations on that. Um, you guys are together with Cisco Veeam. What's the story? What's going on in Europe with Cisco and Veeam? Yeah, I would say there is a lot of stuff going on between Cisco yeah. and Veeam, um, especially around the Hyperflex story. Obviously, is sort a of topic topic of this session, right? Um, so having the integration in Hyperflex, having, I would say, a good go-to-market, uh, having really a, a joint good relationship between the two companies. Um, and we just joked about how often we've been in front of cameras talking about this exact same topic. So that shows that the relation between the two of us is really moving forward and, yeah. and in a good, good shape. Huh? I think we're in good shape in terms of, if you think about not just my product, Hyperflex, but you look at what Veeam can do for the rest of Cisco data center products and be that backup, uh, safe pair of hands, around what we need in terms of that data protection layer, but also then what we can add in terms of that target to be the server of choice for backups, so you get the benefits of the speed, performance, and more importantly, you get quicker restores, because that's that's the important bit, you need to be able to do the quick restore. Yeah, yeah. If, if we talk, you know, at Veeam we usually talk about availability, right? Uh, yeah. We don't talk about backups or recovery, even if recovery is maybe the most, most important part of availability, uh, still we talk, talk more about availability than about anything else. And as he said, uh, the good thing on Cisco is they actually can deliver what we need in terms of performance, in terms of capacity, yeah. in terms of compute resources. So yeah, that's that's really benefit. It's such an interesting time. I mean, we look back at history, go back 10 years ago, maybe around or more, yeah. back up recovery, it's like, oh yeah, like, that's like, oh, we forgot to talk about that in our RFP, <laughs> kind of bolted on, kind of retrofitted in. But now we've seen it come to the main center. But more importantly, with AI and cloud, and all the action happening with DevOps on premises, yeah. you hear CIOs and CXOs and developers saying, we're data driven. Yeah. Okay? So with, if you're data driven, you have to be data protection driven too. So yes. those things go hand in hand. Yeah. So the question for you guys is, how does a data driven organization, whether it's in the data center, all the way up to the, to the business units or business processes, become data protection built in? How do, they, how do they design in from day one a data protection system up and down the stack? Yeah, so, so maybe I start to answer that question. I, I think when I'm going to customers, and I fully agree on what you just said, most customers 10 years ago were focusing on getting new virtualization platforms, getting new storage systems. It has been isolated projects, right? Now in those days, when I go to customers, I try to convince them to include data protection every project they do in data center. Because at the end, um, as I said, data protection is one of the core elements. So 10 years So back, designing in early yeah, at the front end. Yeah, designing in early, right? So, I say whenever you go about having a new Hyperflex system or whenever you talk about replacing your existing vStream environment, whatever you do, right, just look into data protection, look into the availability story. Because right now, and, and you mentioned that, it's about the data services, right? We don't, we don't really talk about restoring a VM. We don't re restore just a single file. It's about the, the customer wants to have a, a data availability in terms of a service availability. Um, and that, that includes more than just a VM and that includes more than just a single single thing, right? Yeah. So they, they need to include data protection and, and the design of that in, in the whole project yeah. from the beginning. And your, your point? Yeah, we, we look at it from a um, similar thing in terms of where you've got changes happening in terms of the way people are looking at how they want to design their applications, yeah. where they want their data to live. And that's the whole message in around 3.0 is that multi-cloud readiness platform. Being able to think about an application and go, do I want to design in the public and house privately or vice versa? Do I want to house the data of the application in a private location and the actual application in the public? Having that being able to be transparent to a user in terms of the way they design it and then position, but also as we look at other applications, not, not all uh, people on this journey are going to go, we're going to put everything in the cloud. 
they're going to look about, well, I'm going to have maybe a little bit in the cloud, a little bit of uh, the, the traditional apps that we need to manage and protect, and it's all about that 3.0 that we've, we've delivered the pre-multi-cloud offering around hyperconvergence. We've now brought the, the multi-cloud element. It's giving you the choice of where you want to position things, where you want to house things, how you want to design things, and keeping it nice and simple for customers and the, the agility and performance. Yeah. yeah. Darren, some really interesting points that you, you just had there. When I think back to a few years ago, Hyperconverge, pretty strong in North America, but it was project-based. It was like, let's take a VDI or some virtualized environment. It wasn't a cloud discussion. Correct. Take us inside what you're seeing in Europe here, because today, Hyperconverge is a lot about yeah. cloud, how that kind of you know, hybrid or multi-cloud environment fits. So what, what are you hearing from Absolutely. your customers? And, and I think if you look at the, what's happened in terms of hyperconvergence up to this point, it's the, the, the initial building block of this multi-cloud. And we're seeing more and more customers now, I think the, the latest IDC surveys, showing that 87% of all customers are, have a, a cloud, multi-cloud strategy. And we're seeing now more of the ability to think of hyperconvergence as that multi-cloud strategy and have that simplicity that people have done in terms of the initial thoughts around a simple application, how they can collapse the layers. They can now utilize that experience into the multi-cloud experience. And we're, we're seeing more and more that, a, a, so we've, we've now got 2,500 users around uh, the world, around Hyperflex, yeah. and about a, uh, 700 to 800 in EMEA. And the majority of those are utilizing it as a private cloud experience. They're getting the benefits of what they've had in the cloud and getting away from the sovereignty issues and the, um, the shadow IT issues that they all face. They can now bring it back into their own data center. They can start small. They can spin up applications very quickly. They, they, they're getting the benefit of that cloud message, but locally now, yeah. And yeah, and, and I think that perfectly aligns with the Beam story because as you know, we, we are also focusing on the cloud. Uh, we recently changed our slogan to any app, any data, any cloud, uh, and also did some acquisitions on the cloud, cloud, cloud side. So we are, we are also moving for, forward in, in the cloud story, in the hyper cloud, um, hyper cloud area, and that's 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 more or less what what what, uh, what, what Cisco Moody cloud story is also about, right? Um, and I think one one thing we, we should also mention uh, mention here, um, coming a bit back to how to how to implement and how to design such solutions. As I said, having having a, a, a more of a broader view on all the projects. I think one one important thing for customers is the CVDs Cisco have, right? Uh, and we do have CVDs also available to Beam and Cisco on the data protection layer. So we make it we try to make it really easy for customers and for partners to design, implement, and actually do the right decisions for those projects. Yeah. yeah. So, so Stefan, uh, at Vimon, of course, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of partners, a lot of talk about the multi-cloud. Yeah. Of course, Veeam has a long history with VMware, but why don't you talk about Microsoft? I believe there's some things you've been doing lately with Hyper-V and the like, you know, what, what, what's the update? Yeah, yeah, so obviously with, with Hyperflex 3.0, there is Hyper-V coming, right? That's one of the biggest things coming, yeah. uh, coming in Hyperflex. Now for us, when we started to talk with Cisco, or when actually Cisco told us that, that Hyper-V is next in, in 3.0, we said, you know, that's, that's fine for us, because as you said, we are dealing with Hyper-V uh, like we deal with VMware since a couple of years, so there is no big difference in terms of features and what we can do with Hyper-V. Overall, on the Microsoft side, obviously, it's around Azure Stack, um, which also is, is a big, big story with Cisco and Veeam, uh, because there is an Azure Stack solution, so uh, we try to get the Azure Stack uh, fully integrated in, in the Veeam uh, portfolio, uh, and it's about Azure, right? Getting, as we, as we just talked about, uh, making this, this cloud journey even easier for the customer, making sure we have data protection for Azure, or making sure you can actually use our cloud solutions in Azure uh, to, to provide the full experience in the cloud. So the question on the European uh, audience, I was just looking at some Twitter uh, tweets here, getting in some feedback, is yeah, um, ask the GDPR question, which basically is code words for the sophistication between data protection, um, yeah. you know, the, the saying we say is you get bitten in the, in the butt if you don't pre prepare. Yeah. And this is one of those things where, I mean, literally, there's so much data out there, people can't even understand their own tables. I mean, yeah. if you have accounts, how do I know a user uses you know, a certain name in this one, I got a certain name in this database? I mean, it's just a nightmare to even understand what data do you have, yeah. never mind taking someone out of a database. Yeah. So, the challenges are massive. Yeah. This is coming down and it really highlights the bigger trend is, what do I do with the data? What is my protection? What's my recovery? Yeah. How do I engage in real time? GDPR, issue is some Hana, so we'll talk about the GDPR issue and then what it really is going to mean for customers going forward. Right, I think if you think about GDPR and people 
I've got the Mr. Mona, that it's just an Amir thing. It's not, it's a worldwide thing. Any, any data that relates to a European citizen anywhere in the world is covered under the GDPR. So you've got to think about the multinationals we work with have to have this GDPR uh, thoughts even if they're not based in EMEA, they may house data based around a European citizen. So it's, it's a massive thing. Now, not one person or one organization can fix GDPR. We're all part of a bigger framework. So it, it, it looks like, if you, if you look at the Hyperflex offering, having self-encrypting drives, having good data protection and replication of the d data so it's protected, that protects the, the, the actual content of a record yeah but it doesn't solve everything around GDPR. There's no one organization that can do that. It's about having that framework of you do the right decisions around the architecture and the data protection, you'll you're, you're get in there in terms of the protection. Well, I yeah. mean, I'm just going to rant here and just say whoever came up with GDPR doesn't don't dig anything about databases, okay? Yeah. I mean, just, I get the concept, yeah. but I mean, just think about how hard it is to deal with unstructured data and structured data in and of itself Within a company, never mind inside a company, yeah. what's happening externally, it is a technical nightmare. Absolutely. <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah. yeah, just hand waving, hey, someone <laughs> came to your website. Well, did they come in anonymously? Did they log in? Which identity did they log in on? Is there's no yeah. like, seamless identity? I mean, it's a nightmare. This is a huge problem. Yeah. yeah. What do customers I, do? I, I think, you know, if, if you talk about GDPR, it's, it's first of all not about a single solution, right? It's, it's not an issue of, of just one company, or one vendor, one, one solution. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it goes across different, different databases, different applications, different software. So, as you said, it's database, uh, database solutions. You need to delete maybe a single, single entry, a single table entry, which is almost impossible right now, especially if that's in a backup, right? How are you going to do that? Um, and uh, I think I think between between Cisco and us, and, and he mentioned yeah. that one 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 important part of GDPR is the data protection itself, right? So the customers need to make sure they can actually promise and they can show to the government that they have a pro have a proper uh, data protection in place, so they can showcase, you know, what does my DR plan look like? How do I recover? What is my RTO, my RPO? Well, so yeah. we can already solve those issues. Well, it changes GDPR. your game because for you it turns you into a insurance policy yeah. to a proactive kind of because yeah. in order to do data protection, you actually have to know what the data is. So it kind of makes yeah. creates an opportunity to say, hey, this is a, an opportunity to say, we're going to start thinking about kind of a new e-discovery yeah. model. Yeah, and, and yeah. I was going to say, in terms of, if you look at 3.0, the multi-cloud platform, you, we, we were discussing around how hyperconvergence started very small in certain apps, but it, when you actually then expand that out into the multi-cloud, security is a major pillar, and you've got to have the security elements, and Cisco have some great security offerings in the mm -hmm. data center and outside of the data center, that all form mm -hmm. part of that, GDPR message, but it's been baked into MultiCloud 3.0 as a key uh, yeah. component to allow customers that confidence. There's going to be a yeah. hyper convergence of databases, so this is coming. Yeah, I mean this hasn't. I mean this is going to force. I think I think the, reg, the, the compliance is going to be more of a, a shot across the bow, if you will. I'm, I mean I think. I mean, I don't know how hardcore they're going to be enforcing it, but. It's yeah. going to be interesting I mean, the first one, because at the moment I think a lot of customers are, are thinking, well, we, we'll, we'll wait till we see how big the fines are, yeah. and then we'll decide. They're going to create yeah. shell corporations yeah. in the Cayman Islands with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so, so we've talked a little bit about some of the headwinds that we're facing in IT. Talk about the tailwinds. A lot of things uh, in the Hyperflex 3.0, so you've got seven or 800 customers. What's going to drive adoption, get that you know, into thousands of uh, customers here in 2018? So, so I think it's the simplicity message. It, customers want ease of use of technology. They, 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 don't, they want to get away from what they've had before, where they've had um, tough times standing up applications, where they've had to invest time around different skill sets for the infrastructure, be it networking, be it storage, be it compute, having three teams battling against each other and change windows. So the simplicity message of Hyperflex is, you can have a three node cluster up and running in 34 minutes, including the network. We're the only ones that incorporate the network into the solution, and we do it for good reason, because we can get predictability in performance, and we can grow the solution very, very easily. And that's the whole point of what they're doing, is they want to be able to start small, and add more uh, nodes when required, around what applications they're going to deploy on. We see, our, our tagline is, any application anywhere now, in either a private location or into that multi-cloud location. Gives customers choice, and I, I think as we start seeing more and more customers 
700 in just over, just under two years is a phenomenal amount in EMEA and 2,500 worldwide. We've had some great traction. It's just going to get faster and faster. Yeah. Yeah, and I think you know a lot of customers are obviously talking about moving to the cloud completely or at least the majority of the data. So for, for the customers that stay on prem, for, for them, and I talked about uh, with some customers uh, actually today, and they told me, no, for us right now, we can't focus any more on a data center itself. We do have much, much more uh, difficult and more important topics to talk about and to cover in our in our IT business than the basic data center itself, right? That includes compute, that includes virtualization. So it's great to hear you can actually set up a Hyperplex system, no matter if that's Hyper-V or VM or whatever, in less than an hour, right? And if I tell you now that if you add Hi Veeam on that, on top of that to provide the availability for just install Hyperplex yeah. environment, that's also less than an hour, right? Yeah. So if you know how to configure that, you can be done in, in a couple of hours and you have more or less a whole data center set up. So. Yeah, yeah, you bring up a really good point. What are customers concerned about? I have to yeah. worry about my yeah. application portfolio. I have my yeah. security issue. My whole cloud strategy piece, so if the infrastructure piece is just invisible and I don't have to touch it, yes. you know, tweak yeah. it and do that, yes. I'm going to have time to actually yes. grow my business. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the, more, the more integrated it is, the more, you know, the, the more easy it is to set up and to maintain and troubleshoot, by the way, that's also an important thing, right? What, what, what if it does work? So if, if, the, if it, there is a, a consistent layer, a consistent way to get all these information and to get the troubleshooting thing done, uh, the better it is for our customers. Because yeah. again, they don't want to care anymore what's happening in the back end. Yeah. And that's the next challenge we're, we're addressing around in, our product called Insight, is taking that management solution into the cloud to make things easier for customers. And being able to take a lot of the things we have in point products into a cloud model. Yeah. So the likes of analytics, the likes of smart tech. Not, customers, get fed up when, if they have an issue, they have to go and roll the logs up into TAC and then go and FTP them. They get away from that, they don't need to do that yeah. in Insight. And it's all about, we, we, we're talking about the, the deployment of technology. Well, one of the first benefits of Insight is Hyperflex. Yeah. We can roll out sites without even visiting them. You just do a cloud deployment yeah. and a cloud management, yeah. and it's, it's job done. And this is the whole point we were kind of getting at early, connect back to the compliance issue. These agile-like things are happening, it's throwing off data too. So now you got to organize the data. You can't protect what you don't understand. Correct. I mean, that is ultimately yeah. the bottom line for what's happening. Yeah, here. yeah, you can't protect what you don't understand. I think that's, that's, <laughs> that's find a good, conclu good conclusion of the whole thing. Um, and I think for us, by the um, way, when you guys use that tagline, I want royalty. <laughs> <laughs> but it's well, true. I, I'm going to know it <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. No, but this is the big problem. Protection is inherently assuming you know where the data is. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Uh, that's 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 for sure the case. And one thing we work on, and uh, you know, we announced that uh, a couple of months ago, is the Beam Availability Orchestrator, which is another layer on top of it. So he just talked about how how they can deploy within the site multiple sites of Hyperflex yeah. very easily, right? And for us, it's about you know getting the customer an easy solution to do all these disaster recovery yeah. and failover scenarios across the data centers with the Availability Orchestrator. Data is the competitive advantage. Data is messy if you don't uncontrol it and rein it in. Of course, theCUBE's doing their part in bringing the data to you guys here in theCUBE with uh, Veeam and Cisco partnership. I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman, breaking down here at Cisco Live in Europe 2018, live coverage with theCUBE. We'll be back with more after the short break. Mm -hmm.